In this video, I'm going to show you how to use input rebinding with UI navigation. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to create a new type of UINav component called UINav input component. This is basically a normal UINav component, except it also has an image that will be used to show the key icons. So I'm going to call it W my input component. I'm just going to actually, I'm going to delete this and I'm just going to duplicate our existing UINAV component. And I'm going to call it W my input component. I'm actually going to disable the text animations. And also remove this print strings. And now I'm just going to add an image that I can add because I actually have to add an overlay. I'm going to add an image here. I'm going to center the image. And we also have to reparent this to UINAV input component and our image needs to be called input image and there we go now i'm going to create the input box which will hold the input components so i'm going to create a new widget blueprint i'm going to set its parent class to uinf input box i'm going to call it w my input box And now I'm going to add our newly created input components. I'm going to call this input button one as it needs to be called. I'm going to put it inside of a horizontal box. I'm going to add two other input buttons and I'm going to call them input button two and three. And now I'm also going to add yet another input box inside of the input box. And now I'm going and now I'm going to add another horizontal box inside of the horizontal box that I already added. And I'm going to add a text element as a child of the first horizontal box. And this is going to be called input text. I'm just going to update the fill and the alignments. And that's it for our input box. Now I'm actually going to go to our prompt widget that we created and I'm going to reparent it to swap keys widget. We'll need this in order to swap keys in our input container, which we'll create now, and it needs to use a swap keys widget specifically. So now I'm going to add another widget. This one is going to be the input container. The input container will basically populate itself with input boxes for each input action that we, we want to rebind. I'm going to call it W my input container. The only thing this input container needs is a panel widget, which I'm going to add as a scroll box and it needs to be called input boxes panel. Now I'm going to open our my widget and I'm going to add our newly created input container to it. And let's go over the properties that you'll find in the input container. The first thing we'll do is we're going to change the input box BP property to our created input box and the swap keys widget class 
to our prompt widget. Now the first important property of the input container is the enhanced inputs map. This will allow you to choose which input contexts you allow the player to map and which input actions of each of those input contexts you want them to be able to rebind. So I'm going to use an existing input context that I have, this one, and it just has a jump, a move, and a look action. The jump action is mapped to the space bar and the face button, button bottom on the gamepad and also WSAD and the left thumbstick to the axis. So I'm going to add an action here. It's going to be the move action. Actually, I'm going to start with the jump action. So I'm going to add the jump action. Its display name will be jump. And because this jump action is a binary action, it doesn't have any axis. I'm just going to leave the axis as X and the axis scale as none. However, if I now want to add the move action and I want the player to be able to change how they move forward, backward, left and right, I'm going to have to do a different setup. So I'm going to choose the move action. I'm going to have this display name be move forward. And in order to set up the move forward input, I'm going to choose the move actions Y axis and its axis scale as positive. I'm now going to copy this data and I'm going to duplicate this entry. And now if I want to do move backward, I want it to be on the Y axis, but on the negative scale. I'm also going to do the same for the move right and move left part. So move right is going to be on the x-axis and on the positive scale and move left is going to be on the x-axis and the negative scale. So this will allow me to allow the player to rebind both jump and move and specifically move the player will be able to rebind all of the four directions of the axis up, down, left and right. The next step we need to do is we need to go to our player controller and select the UINF PC and update these data table properties. These properties specify which icons and which names are associated with each key on the gamepad and on the keyboard or mouse. So for the gamepad key icon data, I'm going to use the X icon table which is the table of icons for the Xbox gamepad. And for the keyboard, keyboard mouse key icon data, I'm going to use keyboard mouse icon table. Then for the key name data, I'm going to use X name table, which are the names of each key of the gamepad controller, which are the names of each keys of the Xbox controller. And then I'm going to use keyboard mouse name table. If we go back to our widget, we can go over the remaining properties. So the next one are the input restrictions. As you could see in our input box, we have three buttons. These are supposed to be associated with each of the three maximum restrictions in our input container. And the restrictions are basically the input types that you want to allow rebinding. For instance, Let's say I want to have one column for the keyboard and mouse inputs and another column for the gamepad inputs. The way I would do that is I would add an element to the input restrictions with the keyboard and mouse value and another one with the gamepad value. And this will make it so that the first button in the input box is always a keyboard or mouse button and the second one is always a gamepad button. And the third one will be hidden. Keep in mind that there's a maximum of three different input restrictions that you can add and a minimum of one. If you add none, it will just add a none restriction. 
you also have a key whitelist, which is a list of keys that you only want the player to be able to use when rebinding. If you leave it as empty, the blacklist will be active and the blacklist is a list of all the keys that the player cannot use for rebinding. Because we have the whitelist empty, the blacklist is active. Then you can also choose whether the unused input boxes will be collapsed or hidden. And then we have these text properties, which will be shown in different contexts. So for instance, let's say that there's an input action that has a column that doesn't that can't be filled with a key for whatever reason, either because it doesn't have enough keys or because they don't respect the restriction of that column. The button in that column will be shown as this text, which currently is unbound. Whenever you press any of the buttons for rebinding, this text will show up telling the player that they can press a key to use for rebinding. And then this will be the title and the message text of the swap keys prompt widget. I just noticed that there was a little bit of a mistake on my setup. Yeah, I duplicated these actions and this actually needs to be move backward. And on the positive, on the negative scale of the Y axis. So let's now play the game. And as you can see, the input actions that we added are set up here. Even though we only set up two input actions, our move input action was broken down into four different sections. So we have jump, which is mapped to space on the keyboard and to A on the gamepad. And then we have the move actions. And so for instance, I'm going to change the move forward to P. As you can see, we see the press any key text show up. I'm going to press P and I'm going to change jump to C. And if I now stop the game and go back, you can see that these are the keys that are applied to our inputs. And if you were using these inputs in your game, you will see that they were, they are actually applied. Let us now add a reset input settings button. So I'm going to go to our widget. I'm going to add a component button. I'm going to change the text to reset input settings. And I'm going to use its on clicked event. And it's in its on clicked event, I'm going to use the input containers reset key mappings function. And if I now play the game and press the button, you will see that the keys on the input boxes will change, specifically the two inputs that we changed, the move forward and the jump, and they are back to normal. Let me now show you how the input groups work. So if we go back to our input container, you can see that the enhanced inputs value also has an input groups array. And the way that this works is input actions that belong to the same input group cannot have the same key assigned to them, while input actions that are not in the same input group can have the same input map to them. So in this case, I'm going to add a new input context. I see UINF character, and I'm going to use one of its input actions, which is going to be UINF move, and it's going to be the Y axis. Actually, I'm going to use jump. UINF jump. It's going to be the X axis and the none scale. And I'm going to use jump to as the display name. However, the input group is the same. So as you can see, they show up as the same key, but if I remap jump to say T and now I try to remap jump to to T as well, I'm going to see the swap keys prompt and it will say, well, it's a bit 
a bit overlapping, sorry about that, but it will say T is already being used by jump. Do you want to swap it with spacebar? And you can choose yes or no. Yes will swap the two inputs and no will do no changes. So in this case, I'm going to swap them. And as you can see, jump two is now set to T and jump is set to space. I'm also going to reset the input settings to the default state now. However, as you can see, they are both the input contexts that I set up are in the same input group. Minus one is the universal input group, which means that anything that has an overlapping key with this input context will not be allowed. However, if I set the first input context's input group to zero, being a value greater than minus one, and I set the second one to one, they will now have different input groups. And so if I now try to map jump to T, and I also try to map jump two to T, this will now be allowed because they do not belong in the same input group anymore. Now I'm also going to show you a cool feature that comes with UINAV's input rebinding, which is axis remapping. So as you can see, our move forward, backward, right, and left action, even though they are broken down into four different rows, they are just one key, which is the gamepad left x, y, 2d. However, if I try to remap move forward, for instance, I'm going to remap it to rb. This will be broken down into different inputs. So if I now go to the input context, you can see that I used to have left thumbstick x, y, 2d axis. And now instead I have right shoulder for up, thumbstick down for down, and then the x axis for left and right. So even though this was one key, it was broken down into several different keys. And if I now go back and remap move forward to the left thumbstick up, this will be rebound to the 2D axis again, because it will detect that all the individual columns of the input action can actually be grouped into one key and it will do just that. So if I go back to our input context, you can see that I only have the 2D axis key again. There is one more event that you may find useful in the input container, which is the on add input box event. By default, this event will simply add the input box widget to the input boxes panel. However, if you don't want it to be added there, or if you want to have different uh, panel widgets or different sections, you can change this event and handle adding the input boxes how you like.